What else? Being familiar with, the with typical adjustments to the trial balance, such as depreciation. So if you buy an asset, let's say I buy this asset, whatever it might be, a piece of machinery, if I pay $1,000 for it, and it's going to last, let's say, 10 years, $1,000 divided by 10 years, which is $100, that is what's known as depreciation per annum. In other words, I'm spreading the cost over the economic life of this asset. That's called depreciation. Sometimes if I've got a building, I might consider revaluing it upwards. And so there's a little journal entry, as we say. A journal is simply a little diary that records the debits and credits, values going up. So if a building goes up in value, I'll add to the value of the building by debiting it, and I'll credit something called revaluation reserve. So I'll explain all this on the main course, of course. What else? Accruals and prepayments. In other words, if the business has an electricity bill that it has to pay for this year, but it hasn't quite got round to paying it by the end of the year, because it relates to the 31st of December year-end, it shows up in the books as something that's payable, a liability to the electricity supplier. So what you do is you charge your electricity account and you credit, you set up a liability to pay in January, maybe the following January after December. So that's called accruals. Prepayments, obviously, is where you pay in advance. And so the company has a bit of an asset. For example, if you are paying rent for a building and you pay six months rent, but after three months your year end comes to an end, obviously the coming three months are free of any rent charge. So you have a prepayment, an asset, an economic benefit. So these are the concepts behind this exam. So what else is there? How to pass continued. You've got to prepare final accounts, including statements of cash flow. I love cash flows uh, because you've, the student has to prepare an operating, investing, and financing statement, three categories. And the examiner tends to give you little bits of each category from time to time. So it's a lovely little exercise. What else is in this paper? How to pass. Mastering the three great skills of control accounts, bank reconciliation statements, and something called suspense accounts. Uh, a suspense account is where there's a problem with the bookkeeping, with the accounting, and when the uh, proprietor or even the accountant uh, tries to make the books balance at the end of the year, producing what's known as a trial balance, so all these little ledger accounts, these little T accounts that I described, one of which was a cash account, all of these are summarized into a little list of balances called a trial balance, as I'll explain. And if the trial balance doesn't balance, you have to produce what's known as a suspense balance, the difference. Let's say if the debit side is 10,500, but the credit side is only 10,000, you bring in another 500 into the credit side to make the debits equal the credits. That thing is called a suspense account. Now, I, I really like suspense accounts, even as a student I used to. In fact, a few years ago, ACCA asked me to write an article about suspense account because I had a certain method of doing it, which of course I share with you on, this, on the videos. My personal way of doing suspense accounts, a three-pronged attack, uh, attack. So all that is yet to come. What else? Preparing limited company and partnership accounts. Uh, using incomplete records to produce key figures in finance, in final accounts. In other words, if, let's say, the figure for stock or inventory is missing, there's a certain way in which you can get to that figure very quickly using a, a, a bit of skill. It's called incomplete records. For some reason, the person who owns the business at the year end forgot to count the inventory, the stock. And so you are called in as an expert to guess what that stock might have been. Uh, and so you, ha you have certain techniques you'll use to work that out. Alternatively, you could have stock, <coughs> excuse me, stock that was destroyed in a fire. 
and you, you don't know what the figure is because it's been destroyed, but based on the sales and the profit margins and the opening stock, you can actually work out what that closing stock or inventory, as it's sometimes called, is. So stock, inventory, similar kind of word. So that's another important way of passing, and of course knowing your accounting standards. So there you are. A few ideas. So you must ensure that you understand the concepts used in each syllabus area. Extremely important to understand concepts or ideas. When I was a student years ago, I was just told this is how you do it and I'd think about why and so on myself. But as I became a lecturer, I began to realize the most important thing I've got to communicate with my students is the ideas behind everything we do. And I always say to my students over many, many years now, if you understand the idea behind doing partnership accounts, why are you doing it? What exactly is happening? Then doing the steps, the execution of the steps is no problem. And you cannot fail this exam if you understand the reason why you're doing it. So that's how to pass, understanding the concepts. Be able to adapt techniques studied during the course to individual exam questions. That's very important, isn't it? The, you have techniques, but can you adapt it to a scenario? You see, you could work out the percentage gross profit on sales. You can work out what sales is, but can you use that? Can you adapt those skills to work out the stock lost in a fire? The inventory lost in a fire, that kind of thing. And of course, practice exam questions in a fast, timed exam environment. Uh, don't pretend. I always feel very sad when the college gives you tests to do and lots of students don't do the tests or they do their best not to do the tests. They only do it because they absolutely have to. But one or two will give bad excuses, you know, bad reasons and try their best not to do the test on the grounds that one day, on the big day, when they face the examiner, the ACC examiner, that's when they do the test for the first time. So that's uh, the surest way to fail, I would say. Do as many test questions as you can, as many hours spent in exam-simulated conditions. Pretend you're doing the exam. Okay? So that's what I'd recommend, doing as many tests as the college gives you. What else do we have? The Next thing I ought to do, I suppose, is to consider the past paper analysis. Sadly, for F3, the ACCA don't publish past papers, so we have a big problem. So what we've done as a team at the LSBF Interactive is devise questions uh, to help you pretend you're doing exam questions. So we've thought of what the examiner might set, and we put that before you in all these tests. The pilot paper is available, so that's we allow to use that, of course, because it is available. And as I say, the college has specially created questions on every section of the syllabus. I mean dozens and dozens of questions on each part of the syllabus. And I can faithfully say to you that if you do all the questions in our college material, or as many as time allows, you will sail through that exam. Okay? Lots of my students get 80s and 90s on F3, and they don't look that good in class, I must say, <laughs> except that they work very hard, and they understand the reason why we're doing things. And of course, the hard work at home, etc., is devoted to doing lots and lots of questions that the college has devised for you. So we'll share all that with you once you, uh, you know, enroll, etc., but we try to improve that. I can't, believe, I can't say that all our material is perfect, not at all. We're trying to improve it constantly. But the results coming through, um, as you might know, are, are great, really, and I feel so encouraged by that. I remember one student, um, was it six months ago? Was it last time? I can't remember, a few months ago anyway, uh, was attending my lectures and attended about 80% of the lectures and stopped coming to the last few. And then he turned up the following week and I said to him, why didn't you, you know, what happened? You, know, you missed a, a week and uh, he said, oh, it's all right, Francis. 
I, was, I felt so confident with your method. It's almost exactly his words. I decided to contact the ACC and do the exam before you finish the course. And I said, how much did you get? 68%, he said. I said, had you stayed, you might have got more. He said, no, I'm very happy. 68 is wonderful because the past mark, the past mark is 50%. I got 68%. So that only shows you that it is possible just to use the techniques we explain. You don't really have to do the whole course, and you can easily pass. But I'd strongly recommend staying for the whole course, studying the whole of it before you attempt the exam, in which case you can get more than his 68. But it's quite a brave thing to do. I think he had a clash with other subjects who was concerned about you know, speeding up, doing lots of the F4s and 5s and 6s as well. So I'd, I'd say that our method works, but the biggest thing, of course, is you must pass.